everyone, welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. I'm sorry it's been a bit since my studio tour last week. It's been very busy. We had the 4th of July holiday, as you all know, um, if you live in the U.S., um, our Independence Day. And it was a busy, busy, long weekend. My son and his girlfriend came up last Wednesday. I met the parents on... Um, Friday and spent the day with them and then friends over the weekend and it's just been it's been so so busy but a uh, couple things uh, first an update on my finger so many have been messaging me and asking and those of you who follow me on Instagram already know about it but I had a problem with my finger it is healing I don't even have a band-aid on right now um, ouch. but uh, this is my cut and it is healing it's closing up on its own it was about an inch wide you can see some of it is already healed way over to this side but um, it's still healing but my problem is is that I severed a nerve and severed a tendon they don't know if it's completely severed but it appears to be because you can see I can't straighten my finger. And if you try to bend your index finger, just the top, it's impossible to do without holding this knuckle straight. You just can't do it. But when I try to straighten my hand, you can see that this does not straighten at all. I have no ability to straighten my finger. So I severed the tendon and I mentioned to the doctor... I said to this guy, hmm. I said to him, I said, uh, you know, when I did this, I think I hit the bone. I mean, I felt it hit the bone. And I'm sorry if that's grossing some of you out. To be honest, I severed a nerve, so there was very little pain with it at all. In fact, it's still numb. I can't even, I, I can kind of feel my finger running along the bottom. But yeah, that it's... It's going to take a while to come back, I think. But anyway, um, I told him about it, and he said, well, can you bend it? So I went like this, and I could bend it like that far. And he thought I was babying it because I had just cut it. And I said, no, actually, it doesn't hurt at all. I think I may have severed a nerve as well. And he said, oh, you're moving it. It's just fine. Everything's just fine. Well, maybe my flexor tendon is just fine because I can, I can bend my hand and I think that's going to come back. But when I go to straighten it, it doesn't straighten. So my extensor tendon has been clipped. Problem is, is I've gone 10 days now and um, I'm really upset that it went that long. Uh, my doctor, I saw my regular doctor yesterday. I called him up and I said, I got a problem. I think, <clears throat> I think I may have severed a tendon and I need to be seen. So they got me right in yesterday afternoon. Um, and he said he got me into see a um, orthopedic surgeon who's actually the same surgeon that's doing my husband's surgery. So I was very happy to hear that because he had great ratings. So anyway... Um, all that being said, I see him tomorrow and then we go from there. I'm hoping that it's not completely severed, but the fact that I don't have any pain makes me concerned that I may have completely severed the tendon. If you have a partial tendon tear, like any of you have had an ACL tear or, or any other tendon tear um, or bad sprain, you know there's pain involved when you try to flex or extend it, depending on which one it is. And I don't have any of that, so it could be completely severed. If it's completely severed, then I have to have surgery to have it reattached. If it's partially severed and it's less than maybe 50%, then they can splint me for six weeks and try to see if it'll grow back together. And then possibly an additional six weeks, and then I would start physical therapy to slowly you know, do exercises on my finger. Um, I'm such a flipping klutz, you guys. I am just a klutz. I fall all the time. I break bones all the time. I've broken my nose twice, my arms twice, my ankle. Um, 
toes, uh, cut off a finger, cut off a toe. I mean, I, I've done it all. So you guys have all heard this. But anyway, let's get on to the video. Um, I bought this book. Uh, last week it came and I was very interested in it. I bought it used. It's called Fill Your Watercolors with Nature's Light. And it is by Roy Roycroft. No, Roland Roycroft. And I got it on Amazon. I believe you can still buy it new, but I bought it used. And aside from the jacket being a little, a little worn, um, is pretty great. I think I paid, it says uh, the retail price was $30. I think I paid $6.50 for it. The inside was in perfect condition. And I wanted to see this guy's technique. All of you know how much I love uh, John Salmonen and his paintings and the way he does his trees. Well, the trick to all of that is a ton of masking. This guy does a ton of masking. I hate masking. Seems like it takes so long and I just want to get to the painting. You know what I mean? So um, I wanted to see how he does this and he features masking, pouring, and spattering techniques. And he does a lot of pouring of watercolor right onto the paper. But the same thing can be done with wet into wet technique, which is what I think I would prefer to do. So I was taking some bits and pieces of his book here. And uh, then he also does some negative painting techniques. And he also shows flowers. But um, you can see some of his beautiful paintings here. I don't know if I've got the shot in here. There you go. There's some really pretty, pretty paintings, but I love the way he does the trees. They are very similar to John Selmanen, and I've showed you John Selmanen's books before. Here's another one. It seems like he loves winter paintings, at least in this book. That's what he was featuring. Maybe he wrote it in the winter. I don't know, but... You can see all the light and everything. Now, some of it, he tends to be very repetitious with his colors. He uses a lot of yellows and um, some blues. That He's big into yellows and blues. But um, anyway, he also shows how he, he uses bits and pieces of, like, paper or whatever. Let me find the page here. I've got to be getting close. Here we go. Um, there, he calls them composition clippings, where he takes little squares of paper, and then he places them. I'm sorry, I bumped the table, you guys. He places them all over the place on his uh, paintings or on his thumbnails to start, and he will get his compositions going like this. And then from there, he does his thumbnail sketches, and then he starts his painting process, or his masking process, and then his painting process where he does pouring. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try something today. I'm going to try a little bit of his technique, and I'm going to do it my way. I'll do it my way. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> anyway, that's going to get cut out. I hope I find it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on doing one of these paintings. I'm sorry that my intro was nine minutes long. Let's get moving. Okay, I was going to use a bigger sketchbook, but realized I left it in the house. So I'm going to go ahead and get clean off my desk here a little bit. I was working on some bookmarks earlier. I needed a few bookmarks and one of them got eaten up. So I redid it. I just made a little quickie. I just splattered some paint, put some pen on it, put a verse on the back, and bam, I got a bookmark. But very simple. It's another thing you can use your B paper for, and I just cut it into little bits. So I'm going to go ahead and use this book. I need to get it, get it um, used up. Now here I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture, but 
what I did was looked at some of his photos and then came up with something of my own so that I'm not copying anything from his book, especially for a YouTube video. But I wanted to uh, put in some mountains, a river, some hills, valleys, that kind of thing. You'll see it come together here. And now I'm just using some masking fluid to mask out some areas, not a lot. I, am, I ended up not doing as much of his style as I had hoped. I started to fall back into my own, but I do plan on doing more of that in the future. I'm going to practice it and then I will do another video on it. Okay, I think I'm just gonna start right from the top and do my sky first. Actually, I just um, got my my brush full of paint and I think what I want to do is um, I want to wet it first so let me just go ahead and wet this I'm gonna do a wet into wet here I'm just doing this in my pentelic sketchbook Somebody over on Instagram had mentioned to me that pentalics are hard to find now, and I don't know what's going on with the company. I'm no longer affiliated with them. They kind of shut that down, surprisingly enough. Um, oh, it's been over a year ago now for me, I think, that that happened. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So, I'm just putting cerulean blue around on this, just here and there. Gonna leave some of it like clouds. And then Actually, I do want to add a little more blue over here on these edges so that it doesn't look like I missed. There we go. Alrighty. And I am using my... Um, this one is a number eight Da Vinci Maestro sable brush. Love this brush. It's the perfect size and it comes to such a fine point that it's very easy for me to use for an entire painting, really. And now I'm going to go ahead and find some quinacridone gold, I think, and then maybe some rich green gold. Let me, let me start with that. Is this my rich green gold, I think? Yep. I'm almost out of it. Goodness. And I'm going to go ahead in here. I could have done that wet into wet as well. But I'm just going to do it like this. And beyond that. I think I want to do a little olive green down in here too. Oop, too much water. I'm going to end up with a bloom there, so I'm going to have to fix that. If I... There we go. That'll work. And then back here. some ultramarine blue in. I'm just fiddling around here. Let 
making these background trees. Now, I know he does all of this with pouring, so I'm doing it a little bit differently, but uh, it's kind of fun, actually. Over here, I'm going to start with some light color, and I'm going to build up. I'm going to start with the gold, the, the rich green gold, and then this color is going to change. I'll just build color on top of it. Just using ultramarine blue to kind of mix in here. I want to make sure that I keep some continuity with the color using more of a limited palette. Um, get a little more blue in here. Okay, and that's it for that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'll do the water. I'm going to use that cerulean blue again from the sky. A little bit of white here and there. leave it like that so this way it's just picking up the reflection of the sky a little bit okay I want to go ahead and do the mountain but well, I guess it's not too wet I think I can go ahead and do it uh, I want to use a little bit of a purple color so I'm going to grab some of my, this is ultramarine, or cobalt blue violet, that's it. I keep thinking ultramarine, but it's not. And I'm going to use a little bit of my gray and mix it in with it. I'll use my Joseph Z's Cool Gray because it's got kind of a purpley color to it anyway. And I'm mixing these colors together. Here I'm adding a bit of water to my brush to dilute that color and then I'll just spread it around on the paper. I'll be going back several times to cover that. Let that blend together. And I'm just going to go ahead and let everything dry. Okay. And now I'm going to grab some more of that purple color on the mountains here. I've got a little bit left on my mixing tray. And I just want to add some more definition to these dark areas. Now I want to try and erase some of these lines up here from the mountains, at least lighten them, because I was using my um, my uh, gold wing pencils, and I'm waiting on my new gold wing pencils to arrive, the natural ones, which are more of an HB lead, 
these these pencils tend to run on the dark side they're great for sketching they're beautiful pencils they're not cheap you can buy a box of 12 for about forty dollars but they also have removable replaceable erasers you can buy just the eraser and this eraser is big so as it gets lower I can keep moving it up like this in fact I'll do it right now and then I push it back in like this there and now it should stay in place hopefully but this lead is so dark even though this is not the darkest um, it doesn't fully erase but that's okay I don't mind Now I want to start on the trees here, and I'm going to start with my lightest color. It's going to be my um, Cornacridone Gold, I think. Um, either that or I'll use my Aussie Red Gold, but I'm going to see how my Cornacridone Gold works out first. Let's see if we can get some good trees in here with this. getting more distant because it's lower down a hill it's like looking over a cliff so these trees are getting smaller Now the key to this whole painting really is just small, tedious movements, but it is relaxing, so you just have to take your time with it. And you'll see as we move to the foreground, everything will get deeper in value, the colors will get deeper and brighter, and it will look less hazy, I guess you could say. Well, I guess you could say this splint is good for something, <laughs> tapping and splattering paint. some of my 
rich green gold into my pearling green and just kind of lowering the value a bit like that. Still having it green, but not as deep. Now I'm adding a little more detail to the back trees, but remember when you do something like that, you need to really dilute your paint so it's faint in the background because you're not gonna see things in deep color that far away. Now you notice I keep coming back to these trees in the center and that's because I have to wait for each layer to dry and then I add more to it. Here comes some more. This is all going to be part of my walkway. That's pretty exciting. It is so exciting. Oh, he's pushing the dirt all the way over. That's pretty cool. Wow, look at that. It goes right up over this. That is so cool. It's getting all leveled out. Should have taken the steps out. Or the blocks out. Oh well, doesn't matter. We can dig them out if we have to. Wow, it looks very different. Here I'm just removing the masking fluid.
He just broke down the whole bank that was back there. We had a big hill, and now he's breaking it all down so that my walkway isn't sunken so far. I was always twisting my ankle here. It's really cool to see how he's doing this. Very cool to watch. But it's hard to get my painting done. I'm trying to do a video and I can't. Wow, and then there's gonna be a hill back there so that I can have like a garden. Just pushing it all aside, sitting in my building. Boy, he's good going through tight spaces. It's amazing. Very experienced. Pat's sitting there watching too. And now he's going over by our walkout. This is so wild to watch. Now he's up here. Here he comes again. There go my raspberry bushes. <laughs> Very wild. Now he's gonna come around the corner and push it all over here. Now I can have a garden wall back there. You can see how tall that is compared to his bulldozer. So wild to watch. He's about six feet from my door right now. Looking more like a yard and less like a fun house. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm recording it. It's just amazing to me. Is it? Yeah, I should have. We should have taken these steps out, these concrete things. But still can. The ones in the front, he almost buried. He, I couldn't believe how he went around them. He's so good at that. Uh, Gosh, look at all the sand. Practice. This is his favorite part. Yeah. Okay, I'm still working on this tree. I had to keep stopping to watch the watch the um, bulldozer, if you can hear him. My, my table's shaking. I don't know if you can see that. It's so hard for me to do this. I decided to go with a gray because that way I could get some, some more branches on this thing. Which is what I wanted. I'm wishing I would have done this on a regular watercolor paper because I'm liking how it's turning out and I didn't know if I would, so. It's dark on the right side. There we go. If you're worried about paint being too dark, you can always use a piece of scratch paper off to the side. I use just a, I will use a, um, just a piece of my B paper or something to, to use for that, but I didn't today, so... some leaves on this. Just a few here and there. Ah, I'm shaking. The ground is moving. It's like being in an earthquake, sort of. A happy little earthquake. The 
gray. Actually, what do I have here? That's the gray. Dotting.
So I'm sorry for the noise, you guys, with the bulldozer right outside the door, but remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.